kids. Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, say that I'm glad to be back, even though I've been back in town for more than two weeks, but my holiday was good, and I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Mayor Latoli for taking care of things while I was uh, away on family vacation. <coughs> Resolve that the agenda for the March 19, 2019 regular meeting of council be received. Moved by Councillor Mantoni, second by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Resolve that the minutes of the March 5, 2019 council meeting and March 12 special meeting council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> All right, so reception and delegations we have here with us tonight uh, Swan Lake Watershed District, and uh, we welcome Sharla Dillabo. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to come forward, your group there. And I thought we were second up or first up. Uh, there's a cancellation. Cancellation? You the only one. I knew you were prepared no matter what, Walter. So. <laughs> well, I'd like to, uh, thanks for having us, uh, Charlotte, up from Brandon today. Uh, does everybody know everybody here? Everybody knows the great uh, Don Mahan? <laughs> we have uh, we have a hand up we can pass around. And uh, I just want to begin by making some comments about kind of how we ended up here and why we're here tonight. And, and uh, as a lot of you know, this uh, Swan Lake watershed was formed in 2006, and uh, our first uh, full year of operation of 2007. <coughs> and if you look at your handout, um, we have uh, over the years collected about $85,000 of levy from all of our, our municipal partners. And when we started out, uh, uh, the first, uh, we didn't have all the numbers from the first three years, so we started at 2009. And the assessment uh, at that time was uh, very stable. And we stayed with 2008 all the way through at one mill. And at that time, the town of Swan River paid $16,951 every year from 2009, in fact, uh, earlier than that, till 2016-17. And uh, we had a lot of discussion every year at our meeting about how we should set our levy and decided in 2017 that we should use the 2012 assessment and we multiply that number by 0.665 and that resulted in about uh, $3,500 a year a saving for the town of Swan River. And we continue to use that formula up until now, including this year, up until 2020, uh, January 2020. Now, the, where the problem came in, as you, most of you know, at our annual meeting, we invite all of the subject district members in, and those people are all appointed by municipalities. And we decided that since the new legislation has come into play and starting in 2020, we can have a choice, either use assessment or portioning, which is a percentage of our levy. So we, uh, we felt that uh, the people around the room decided that uh, through a resolution that everybody was pretty uh, content with the amount they're paying now. And so we just took those numbers, converted them to a percentage of the levy, and we came up with uh, Swan River paying $13,441, same as we are right now, and going ahead for four years. 
And so at that point, we thought we had uh, we needed a resolution from each of the municipalities to uh, approve the proposal. Uh, three municipalities have approved it, uh, but Town of Swanover has not approved it. So we're here tonight to kind of make our best case uh, for you guys to be a part of this uh, watershed district. We think it's a, a huge benefit to the valley as a whole, and it's a, it's a big benefit to Swanover Town also. If you take a look in the first page, Upper Swan, Lovestick Creek, is the sub-district that Swan River Town is involved in. And during those years from 2009 to 2019, you paid a total levy of 162,000. And the sub-district, we spent $713,000 and change on projects in this area. Pardon me? Mr. Carlton, have you got that broken out? I hate to do that to you, specifically to the town of Swan River. This is the whole Lovetick area. Uh, yeah, we do. If you take, go down, uh, I'll miss out the uh, middle part, but go down to the bottom of the second page. Projects completed in the town of Swan River. The cemetery project of $222,815. And there's a breakdown of how much the uh, the town saved in that project. And then if you go on the back page, the second major project we did was the 6th Avenue Relief Station. And if you add those two together, we spent uh, $299,000, almost $300,000. And that's not including other improvements we've done in town. Thank you. And we're also looking at uh, doing a project this uh, the summer with the town of Swan River on Beach uh, Park. Total, total uh, expenditures in the Swan Valley since 2007 to 2017 is $4.29. So we think that uh, the CD has been a very good uh, contributor to the Swan River Valley. And if you look at some of the numbers going back uh, on the third page. We received 225,000 from the province as a core funding provincial grant. We uh, are entitled to raise 75,000 on a three to one basis from our municipalities. We've been raising 85,000 and we've been taking an extra 10,000 putting it into a rainy day fund. So it's in our special account at the credit union that we have it there in case of emergencies. And if you look at uh, the 2012 mill rate, we've been collecting uh, $85,000. As I mentioned earlier, Swan's paying 13,441. Mountain's paying 6,600. Minnesota's Bozeman paying 2,600. And Swan Valley West is paying 39,000. 26,000, I should say. So uh, we decided that if we use that same uh, assessment and the same formula we did in the last three years and just switch that over to a percentage, uh, we think it's fair. Some of the benefits that uh, we think is uh, happening in the Swan Valley because of the conservation district, because of your involvement. We employ two full-time staff and a, a term position and also a seasonal staff. We sponsor the Environathon program at the Swan, the Swan Valley Regional Secondary School. We have a water festival uh, every year for the grade five students in the valley. We uh, contribute to the Oak Hammock Marsh Education and Schools Program. Uh, we have our office located in town. Significant number of projects upstream to on tributaries that flow into the Swan River, which makes for uh, a much healthier 
water supply in the town of Swan River. We have two fishway projects that uh, helps uh, the recreational fishermen do, uh, do their fishing right close to Swan on the river. We promote and implement uh, recommended actions uh, identified in the IWNP, which includes various projects, services not directly located in Swan River, uh, such as well sealing and water testing. We uh, spend about uh, $400,000 annually, and a major part of that money is spent right in the town of Swan River. We uh, hire local contractors, uh, local contractors hire local people, and they spend their money right here. So that's about all I have to say in terms of uh, the benefits. I would probably turn it over to Charlotte now. Okay, I have a few second hand note. I'm start on this side and hand it this way. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm going to talk about the provincial grant funding amounts in the proposal and a few different scenarios that we've talked about with the board, um, as well as just very briefly talk about the proposal. So you've seen the proposal to um, establish the new watershed district. This is a result of um, the province updating its legislation from the Conservation Districts Act to the Watershed Districts Act. And as a result of that, we created a proposal to establish every new watershed district which is targeted to happen in January. And we um, asked all the municipalities that are part of the program to give us a resolution in support or not um, of the program. So as a result of your resolution that we got that had some conditions, we've had discussions with the board and um, I wanted to walk through the, the handout I have. So essentially, um, they're kind of color-coded. So the gray part at the top talks about the grant that Walter mentions. We provide an annual grant of $225,000 currently to the district, and they need to match that with at least $75,000, but they've been collecting some extra levies, as he mentioned. So in total, they have just over a $310,000 budget right now. That's highlighted in kind of like a dark box. So that number is their total core funding, it's called. Um, the apportionment, which is the prescribed percentages in the proposal, are also listed there in gray. And then what we have is a few sort of options and ideas. If um, council wasn't willing to do the apportionment scenario based on what was in the proposal, some other things that the board's talked about that could be looked at is um, looking at a lower, slightly lower percentage um, such as something like a capped amount. So my first scenario in darker blue has the town of Swan River at $10,000, and we would just collect less local levies. So highlighted yellow, we have a core funding reduction of almost um, just over $3,700. In scenario two, which is the next blue box, a light, a kind of slightly lighter blue, we could look at the other option of a land assessment um, based approach and going back to sort of the minimum land assessment match in which we would need to get at least the $75,000. We could do a consistent mill rate of 0.284. That would reduce the um, core funding to the district because every municipality would provide less um, funding, but it could be something looked at. Again, these are just um, things that we need to go back and talk to all the other municipalities as well to make sure that's something that we want to go forward with. And then lastly, on the back side of the page, we have scenario three, um, which is in green. So if the town of Swan River didn't want to stay part of the program, then your levy that you provide to the district would no longer be there. And then some amount of provincial grant would also be lost from the district too. So that's money that comes to this area that would no longer come from the province. What exactly that would be, um, we would need to determine if we come to that point, if the town was no longer to be a partner in this program. So what would happen is, um, because we have already three resolutions of support from the other municipalities, 
based on on the apportionment scenario, we would likely stay with the apportionment scenario, but just the town wouldn't be involved. So I guess, and that that shows a larger core funding reduction um, to this area, to the valley, because the town of Swan River is no longer a partner. Um, so we wanted to highlight that. Yep. Yeah. Isn't the legislation structured as such if we don't agree? <laughs> that it automatically goes to land assessment by default? Yeah, so originally that's what we thought, because that's what our lawyers had told us. Um, however, we were having some difficulties getting absolutely everyone to agree in other areas where we have more municipal partners. Um, so they told us you should try to reach consensus. What consensus <coughs> means, you know, 100% agreement or 95 or 80% agreement, depends, I guess. Um, but they look back at the legislation and it's written how you need to collect levies and you have option A or option B. So when we changed the act, we wrote that in there um, to give local flexibility. The, the intent from the province was to be able to give flexibility locally to choose which option you wanted to um, use. So we wanted it to be better locally for the districts, um, not to create a larger problem. But here we are. <laughs> so, just, just so I'm clear, though, the alternatives are some form of apportionment, yep. or the the assessment on land for the preceding year. So yeah, okay. So the two ways. It, so the two ways it can be calculated. Sorry. Um, correct. So uh, option A is apportionment, which is just basically prescribing a percentage. How you come to that can be determined how you want to. And option B is you use current total portion land assessment values for every municipality that's part of your district. And so we get those numbers every year from municipal government and we provide them to the district and then they would use that number every year and prescribe one mill rate that's applied to everyone. Can I just ask one more thing? Yes. Uh, um, just looking at Anyone, but let's use um, scenario two. Sure. Um, the only reason that it went down is because we have a mill rate of 0 0.284. If we had a mill rate of 0 0.2, 0 0.294, for instance, Thank that God. would go up. Mm -hmm. And so we could figure out the same $86,000 and we just changed the individual levies of each individual municipality. Isn't that right? Yeah. And so even with on both cases with apportionment or mill rate you kind of have something similar in, in that um, perspective so when it's in the regulations for once we've established a new watershed district we have to say it's an apportion it's going to be an apportionment and these are the percentages or it's going to be a current land assessment right. which is given every year so based on apportionment in this case we've um, put in 16 percent Right. But sixteen percent of eighty-six thousand is different than sixteen percent of seventy-five thousand. So locally, the district can choose as long as they at least match the seventy-five thousand that the province requires them to match. You can go higher or lower above seventy-five thousand, which applies to both the apportionment and the land assessment part. So when Walter was talking about the extra ten thousand dollars, that's because the province only requires mm -hmm. every district to to match on three to one, and if you choose to collect more, that's a local decision. I, I understand. Okay. Uh, I, I, my question is much more simple than that. Okay. Sorry. The numbers are based on mill rate of 0.284. Yeah. But if we wanted eighty-six thousand dollars, you could change, we the, just mill change the mill rate. Yes, you okay. can change the mill. You can choose so, whatever mill rate you want to. So do we just use 0.284 because that's what we currently have? I use 0.284 to um, demonstrate the minimum match of $75,000. Okay. Yeah. But that mill rate applies to all of these. I know. Is there some suggestion that we're not going to try and collect $86,000? Has that been suggested? I'm just trying to get my mind around what the issue is. Right, so the, the issue is that we received a resolution, like the province, um, received the resolution from your council mm -hmm. saying um, we agree with you know the proposal but not the apportionment part. So we don't want to pay um, this $13,760. So, that's what the resolution said. It said we want to be members and we believe it should be based on the 2019 assessment, the ongoing assessment. That's what I think the resolution said. So from the conversations that I've had 
the understanding I have is that the council doesn't want to pay the apportionment am amount, which is in the proposal. And so I think that what we are trying to understand is because all the other municipalities have agreed to apportionment, um, would this council also agree to apportionment, or or do we need to have more conversations? I can't speak for Great, right, of course. I think you were misinformed. That's not what our position was. Our position okay. was not based on the ultimate result. Our position was that you decide the process in advance, and then whatever the result is, the result. What happened, it appears, is that we wanted a result. Somebody wanted a result, and so they designed a process that came to a specific result. So. If someone says this is why 2012 makes sense, mm. then I don't. Uh, for for me, I have no problem with that. But I'm having trouble seeing what the value, what the purpose is, or what the rationale is, because of, uh, what we do with every municipality in the province, as far as I know, and you may be able to correct me because I'm a pretty new councillor and I'm not that smart. So sometimes I get things wrong, but it seems to me that every municipality in the province does all of its funding and all of its spending based on assessments. Or am I missing something? So Isn't that true? Historically, in the past, with the Conservation Districts Program, it has been based on land assessment, but now we're going through this process in all, which we're giving them the option. All, all I'm asking you is, isn't the, the process that every municipality uses, in Atonis, Swan Valley West, Mountain, Winnipeg, that they that is based on assessments, everything they Specifically for raised. the conservation? No, for everything. Oh, for everything. everything. Every mm -hmm. municipal corporation mm -hmm. is funded by assessments based on that year's assessed values. Okay. Isn't that true or am I missing something? Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking, but that, that doesn't well, is it, apply. Isn't it, isn't it true or not? It doesn't apply to CD so. Well, no. Everything we fund is funded through assessments, isn't it? Generally, I, yes. I don't know all the other okay. programs that exist is. in the so, province. But that's not necessarily true, Dave. Because uh, you yeah. do have uh, ser shared services that, that it's not based on assessment, right? We, uh, well, it's a, we do it by household, we do by person per capita. There are services which are right. like garbage or or um, other things, but most things. So, right. okay, for so instance, that's the point I'm making. So this falls into into this other things. Well, maybe CDs. That, then that's the, really the question. I I I don't want to preempt things, but you see the thing I is. Yeah, the thing about it is, Dave, that's things. changed in the new act is that we have to use, if we go to assessment, we have to use the current assessment. I know. We used to be able to go back and use the old assessment okay. Okay. to come up with a figure. Okay, I know that one. I, I, I understand that. Here's my, my problem. So I'm trying to search circuit because I understand the numbers. I, I looked through them, they're pretty straightforward, and Ed Quake County did a great job of color coding them and putting them in a <laughs> process that we can follow, even for somebody like me. But why would we use 2012 assessments? Just tell me why. What's the rationale? The rationale is because uh, in 2008, all of our assessments, we used one mill times 2008, produced $85,000. Right. If we would have kept staying to the next year, the year after, yet the year after, and then all the way to 2016, we would have had to, so I never. Uh, Swan Valley West and Lieutenant Thomas Bozeman would have been paying by far the lion's share. Right. And so we felt, everybody around the room said, well, this is not fair. If this is getting out of hand, the Swan River Town is, uh, the assessment's going up a very small amount. Swan Valley West is going here, Lieutenant Thomas Bozeman's going here. So what looked good in 2008 didn't look good in 2016 or 17. And so we, we stuck to 2008 as long as we could. And then finally, we have to uh, move on to a higher <clears throat> assessment, and so we just lowered the mill rate. But isn't isn't that the the very point I'm making? That that's looking at the result yeah. and saying we're going to redesign the program to get a specific result. Yeah, yeah, we needed to because uh, in am I missing something, or is that is not what you've done? Yeah, we needed we needed to keep it fair. Everybody around the room, all four municipal partners, decided. That this is no longer fair. What worked good in 2008 doesn't work good now, because land does, land values have gone up 300 yeah. percent. So that when you plug those numbers in, it throws everything out of whack. So we have to artificially 
bring those numbers down. So we picked uh, an older assessment year to keep those numbers more so, fair. So you're a counselor in a bonus. Are you saying to me that because people in Bozeman um, have houses that are consistent in value, but somebody who lives two miles outside, whose land has gone up, that you're giving some kind of credit to the people who live outside? Because it's the same assessment, it's the same process. Or am I missing something? Yep. Aren't, you, aren't you using an assessment in, in your municipality for everybody? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a flat assessment, whatever the value is, it's this amount of rate, isn't it? Or am I missing something? When we were, uh, when, Min when Bulls was, was on its own and Minnetonka was on its own, each small town paid 500 bucks and that was it. That, I, mean, I was, my point was that in your municipality, when you're doing your budgeting or you're doing your assessments, mm -hmm. everybody gets charged on the basis of their assessment. Yeah. You don't have different rates because it works out better for some people and worse for other people. Do you? Well, I think I think as a valley, I think we have to sometimes sit down and work things out so it's fair for everybody. Absolutely agree, but but that works two ways. This is a very small amount, but that's a situation that works two ways. But that's not necessarily the the history. I have one more question for you, and then I'll let my colleagues who will have much for questions, I'm sure, for you. <laughs> um, um, why would the province say that you're locked into something? Because because we got this fairly late, and it is a bone of contention that is is embedded in bigger issues, quite mm -hmm. candidly. And, and it's part of something that should be resolved in a, in a global sense, not just in this. Because quite candidly, from the town of Swan River's perspective, just as it is from Minnesota, from the arm of Swan Valley West and the arm of Minnetonas, um, we need to work on a larger number of issues. Mm -hmm. And this number is, I, I agree with you, Walter, I think that we need to look at, at processes for everything, that this is just one of the processes. But I'm having trouble saying we should, work on what's called fairness for this piece, but not for the other pieces, because the other municipalities have universally said they wouldn't work on fairness for the other pieces. So I'm a little concerned why we would lock into a number of years and why the province wouldn't let us say, we want, we'll, we'll look at this for one year and we want to revisit it at the end of the year. Right. The easy answer is because our lawyers told us that's what we have to That's do. Not an easy I know. Sure. Um, the answer is because because when we were told what we need for information to put in the regulations to create these districts, the watershed districts that they're transferring from as conservation districts, we need to put kind of key criteria in mm -hmm. of what creates that district. Mm -hmm. And because in the act it says you need to collect levies mm -hmm. to match your grant. You have option A or B. Mm -hmm. They told us that we needed to put in option A or B to just to determine which one it is. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I absolutely understand that part mm -hmm. because you have to have you have to have clarity in regulation. Otherwise, it's invalid. Right? It's ultra virus. That's what they'll the lawyers undoubtedly will told you. What yeah. I'm asking you is, why are we locked into a several year period? Because quite candidly, if this if I I won't speak for other councils, but if this was for the next year, let's leave it alone while we work out the long-term plan. Right. I think you would find, you know, you would have, have at least one vote for that. I won't speak for the other six. But to say that we're going to lock ourselves into something that is not based on the usual criteria, mm -hmm. based on some principle of fairness, when that doesn't seem to have been cross-applied, causes us some concern. Is there any reason we can't Block one. We can't if we agree to the apportionment. We're we pretty much are locked into the apportionment. You're, yeah, you're locked That's into the, the apportionment problem. until you open the regulations right. again, which would so be like three to five years. years. Every three to five years, we would right. open them for all the districts. Second part then is: Is there anything that stops us from making voluntary contributions, or is there something? Voluntary contribution, like extra? Do you mean? Yeah. No, there's nothing. Would that qualify or help qualify? Because here's here's. If we say we want to stand by our decision for the 2019 assessment for us, for everybody, right. really, and I think that it has to be for everybody, I think you have a real problem there because your legislation is a little we, wonky. But anyway, mm -hmm. that aside, if we say that, but we can come to a long-term arrangement in June, 
and mm -hmm. say, well, then Swan Valley Water. I think there's nobody here who doesn't think Swan Valley Conservation District is a fantastic project, a fantastic <coughs> thing that we all want to support fully. Mm -hmm. But it's part of a bigger fight that's going on. And and candidly, I don't I don't think there's anybody here who would say, well, this would be six thousand dollars really badly spent if we could work out everything else. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that I don't think it's fair to use Walter's criteria that we act fairly in one instance but get held to strict accommodation in another. Mm -hmm. That's our problem. So, I, I, so I, my the question is, is there any reason we can't work that out? Because we can't change the regulation there. But there and to me, uh, it's very disappointing that if you're going to hold a hammer over our head because you're trying to work out a deal with some other municipality and some other issues, I think that we should be dealing with Swan Lake Watershed right now and only the Swan Lake Watershed. Fortunately, we can't. Why not? I don't understand the question. Why not? I, I don't want to get into <coughs> the debate here, Walter, so I think that we should just Sorry. keep moving along. I okay. think that Councillor uh, Dory had a Well, motion. the conversation kind of got taken past the point of my comments, but I guess my comment is if, if 2012 was, was, was the, the result we wanted to get to by going proportionate was 2012 result, result or um, uh, image of 2004. Why didn't we go to 2008? Because you, you, you even just said that 2008 was even more fair. You know, you, we, no. were, we were forced to go to 2012 at one time. Why didn't we change the, Why didn't we make our portioning to reflect the 2008? Uh, it, it, I mean, if that was even more fair, let's go back and. If everybody around the table, around the room, wanted to stay with 2008, we could have translated those numbers into a percentage and locked them in. But I guess if the principle we're going after is fairness, so to speak, whatever that means, then why didn't? Why why aren't we doing? Why aren't we pursuing that? Well, I think the democratic process played itself out, and that's what we came up with. And I can't speak for the people that made the resolutions. But they, they tried to find, uh, you know, looked at the numbers and said, well, this seems fair. I remember one of the minute, uh, one of the, the counselors from Swan Valley West uh, a couple of years ago said, we refuse to go higher than 40000 bucks. So what are you going to do? They said, if we, if you guys expect us to pay more than forty thousand, we'll consider leaving. So we went back to them and said, "Okay, will you come up with an idea?" So we all sat around, 20, 20 people in a room, and we looked at the numbers and we came up with two thousand twelve times decimal six six four, and we came up with uh, what we thought was fair. Swan Valley West was happy, Manitoba's Bozeman was happy, Swan River Town was happy, and and the Mountain uh, Municipality is very happy also. And they said they think they're getting a good deal. They passed the resolution the day after that we uh, gave it to them. And, and at that point, when we changed from 2000 to 2008 to 2012, your portion come down about three thousand dollars. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And from what I've gathered, just talking to yourself at that last meeting when you were there, and I just wish more of the representation of the town council would have been there to see actually what process is and how it works. Uh, you thought that the 13000 was not an outrageous amount to be putting in? No. I, I, okay, and I spoke to Dave and he said that's not an outrageous amount to be putting in. And your position was, and Dave's position is, it should be uh, accumulated by assessment. Well, right now we have an opportunity uh, to either go with the percentage and or go with assessment, and if if we go with the percentage, our numbers stay the same. We're all unified behind this uh, amount that we're putting in, because like, like you're looking like you're not happy with the thirteen thousand at that point. But uh, at, in our conversation, uh, you thought that that was fair, and I think what Walter has stated too, fairness is what we're after here. And uh, if it goes down to the new assessment, the way uh, it's uh, you'd like to propose. Uh, your portion drops down to what? Seven. Around seven thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any dispute at this table that we want to be or don't want to be part of the watershed period, you know. And I think it's coming. Even if it's thirteen thousand dollars, I don't think the council even has a problem with that. It's it's coming up with the how we get to that thirteen thousand dollars and that fairness. And I think that's what you're hearing. And and I don't know if we're actually going to come to you know an agreement. 
in, in this discussion here, but I mean, definitely further discussion that we would have to have about that. And we do have a representation on that committee. Um, yeah, you I, have, I don't, you have, you have I don't, if, if what you're asking for tonight, if you're asking if we are still being a partner of it, but we have to come up with some kind of I'm, I'm saying that I, I hope we will still be a partner and that we want to kind of be able to interpret your resolution, hopefully, that you're going to still be in the program because we have to give those resolutions to our lawyer to write you into the regulations. Well, when you had the resolution samples, there's two options. Right, we didn't choose either. Yeah. <laughs> we said they were um, options you can use, but you don't, right. you're not limited to I know. them. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty true. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Um, so we wanted to know that part that I just said, and then if the financial part is still an issue, kind of what our next steps need to be from there. And, and understand, you know, you can't maybe answer us right now. I'd like to make two points. Uh, Jason moved the motion uh, at our annual meeting. It was seconded by Tom Bobby. Uh, motion failed to use assessment. Uh, uh, Bill Galloway moved a motion. It was seconded to use apportionment, and everybody except Jason voted for it. Now, if you, if it's your the wish of your this council that we bring everybody in together again, and and let the we'd have to have a motion to rescind the last motion, and then bring forward a new motion. We can do that. I can't tell you how it's going to end up. I can't predict how it's going to end up. And but I would we would entertain that if you, so that would make you happy to so put it back to the to the twenty people around the room at a democratic way and have that debate and you guys make your best call next best case and uh, see what what comes out of it. Said so. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you just against the percentage uh, because it goes against uh, your thinking of assessment? Is is that the only reason you would not go to the percentage portion? I just asked you. Right. I, I guess for me, how did we come up with these numbers? We just picked so we just picked random percentages. Really, is what we did. There was no process. But in my mind, ideally, is. No, we didn't take pick random percentages. We took what, <laughs> what percentage was 13,000, what percentage was 39,000, what percentage was 29,000 or 27,000, right. what percentage, the percentage was 10,000 to equal 100%. Yes. In my mind, the, you know, I'm a big believer in no taxation without representation. We make up 10% of the board. We, you, you know, the, the, this would change it for all, for all of us, but you, you almost should pay an amount per board member you have there. If we, if we make up 10% of the board, we make up 10% of the cost. If, you get, if Minnesota and Bozeman has 40% uh, of the board, they pay 40% of the cost. They, that, that's the, the balance of power lies with those votes. If you're gonna, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna have the power, you got to bring the purse. Well, I'm not a counselor. I'm just a citizen rep. Yeah. They feel that I'm. They're getting a fair shake for the dollars they put in at the table there with me representing them, and. Uh, I feel they are too, uh, but uh, this way of this percentage to me, it, it, it only makes sense that it makes everything fair right across the board. We have one opportunity with the new legislation to be make it fair, and uh, that, that's just my position. And I've talked to some of the councillors on Swan Valley West as well, and uh, they're kind of stuck on what they're paying now is enough. Well, okay, so I, I want to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, you said that earlier that, that the town was sort of, I can't remember what you said, putting a thumb to somebody's head or making a threat. And yet, what we're doing is reacting to Swan Valley West's threat. Um, what threat? Well, so you said that they only want to pay 40000 or they would withdraw. Isn't that what you just said? No, that, no, that, was, that was a comment that was, made, that was a comment made Old a few years ago. I know, but, that, but isn't that why we're, we're fighting no, 40000 no, no. Now, they were just demonstrating as to how they saw it and from uh, an unfair point of view, just like maybe you're looking at it from an unfair point of view. So well, I'm just so giving you my, my, my point is this, and, and, and we've had a lengthy conversation on this. 
Uh, the number, the uh, for every, we're about to have another conversation where um, my counsel is going to be asked to pay more on something than they would have previously paid. Because I don't ever agree with the process of you figure out the result and then work backwards and create a formula to get a specific result. That is just wrong. Yeah, I, I can't describe it any better than that. Instead, you should say what is what's the process you're going to do. So, so the default position, and the reason that the legislation um, has two positions is that if everyone work out a deal, that's fine. If they can't, the default position is assessment because that's how every municipality operates. And so, that's logically the starting point. Everything is fair if you have an assessment. So you asked about fairness, that's why it is. So for me, if you say, here's how we decided this process. So in another context, we said 50% population, 50% uh, assessment. In other, there are other processes, but it's because we went through the process of discussing why it's fair and why it makes sense for that particular group. <coughs> what I haven't heard from here is other than <coughs> a result. That's why we have this process, is because we want a specific result, because the result is fair. That's not a good answer, in my view. And that's why I was puzzled. Not because I, because I don't care about the $13,000, or if it was, if our formula, if the formula came out and we owed 200000 well, I think mean, 200000 might be a little pesky, but, but, but $20,000 or $30,000, it is what it is. The formula is the formula, but you have to decide the formula in advance. That's my problem. And I'm, I'm like I said, I'm frustrated with the province imposing this, not imposing is the wrong word, but developing, releasing it in November and saying you have to decide by March, knowing that there were going to be challenges. Like, we're pretty lucky. Really, the four municipalities here, despite the fact that we don't get along sometimes or we disagree and argue, compared to a lot of places, we get along massively better. And so we're pretty lucky. So that's my problem. It's not about the number. It's about the process. And I think the process was related to get a result, and that offends me. I guess, I guess I have a question that might, if I knew the answer, you might make, help me understand this better. What, why both in the past legislation and in, and in the up in the proposed legislation or the current legislation, why is only land assessment used? Why you know, and I, I why why is why is it just land like almost any other any other thing we do assessment wise is both land and and property, you, you know where you know when that's the case then we would be the major contributor and, we're, and we are the major contributor to most things where assessment is involved so what what, what is the rationale behind the government only taking land assessment only land so i can't I, I don't know the whole background because the conservation districts act was written in the 70s um but my understanding is because primarily the conservation districts do programming on land they do soil and water based conservation programming so I believe that's the intent of using the land assessment based on land, excluding buildings. And um, in the past, we've always used land assessment. And the apportionment was written in as a second clause for flexibility based on the fact that we got feedback during our initial consultation period for the new legislation saying that they, there was a desire to have like a second option for how levies could be calculated. All right, well, <clears throat> I don't yes. think we've come to, I think you, you understand that we, we want to be part of the uh, conservation, right. conservation district, but it, I think that we're going to have further discussion as far as how that form formula is going to look like, and perhaps maybe you will have to call your members in, obviously you will have to, and uh, have a further debate about it. So yeah, if you people decide that you'd like uh, to, us to bring everybody in, uh, you have to give us a bit of time because we're getting into the busy season in April. And uh, we have to have our administration uh, at least a week of uh, letters and phone calls and emails and to get everybody in. And we'll have that debate and, uh, and we'll play it out. I, I guess I, I appreciate the olive branch you're extending by doing this. I just I just wonder, you know, gathering 20 people together, like you say, seating's coming up. Is the result going to be any different if we follow the same process? I mean, I lost 19 to 1. Is, <laughs> is it going to be any different? So I just wouldn't want to waste anybody else's time when really the decision needs to be made here whether... I, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to convince even one other person to vote, let alone... 11 I, I think that way. 
I think you have a pretty good handle on, on, on the mood of or what people are thinking. But I can't predict it, and I, I wouldn't even uh, try to. But I would uh, definitely, we would set it up, and I would go through the process, I would chair the meeting, and uh, entertain a motion to rescind if it passed, and then to rescind it, and then we'd, we'd <coughs> a motion to do something different. And we would, we would play it out uh, democratically. Council, right? It just has to pass, a motion to rescind has to pass by two thirds, I think. Office. Is that <coughs> motion to rescind? I believe has to pass by two thirds. Yeah. Okay. So I guess then we can move there, and uh, we will uh, have Councillor Gray come or Councillor. Uh, I think or a touch with these. What's the deadline for them? March thirty first. It was originally March thirty first. Yes. Um. But we could like extend it till the end of April. That still doesn't give us a ton of time, but that way we could have one more meeting. If I can just say one more thing, you know, that all these dollars that come here are max three to one, right? So mm -hmm. if we take less from, if you put in less, the valley gets less. Well, no, we're, no one's going to take it below 75,000. We're going to get the 225. I don't think that's a close call. No, but if you look at the... Uh, we're not, giving the, we're not giving the problems back any money, Don. If we're, looking at, if we're looking at this last scenario here, which there's only like that's, uh, that's not even a, that's not even an option. Our count, uh, there was not a single person who spoke at our council meeting about leaving Swan Valley Water Conservation District. That's not even on the table. Okay. That's not. That's a non-starter, as far as I know. Unless somebody wants to tell me, no, you're not speaking. Hey, one of the points. If you people decide to not join. Uh, and uh, you just told you we're never we were going to join. No, but I mean if you don't pass a proposal then you'll be out. No, uh, no, we're not. Yeah. You have two options. Either you're in with a proposal or you're not. What? That's not that's not the legislation. That's what it says that you know, no. your two resolution options, you you're no, either no, no. yes or no. No, I think you're wrong. There are th there are, there are th the there are two issues. One is, um, are you in or out? We're in. And the second is, does everybody agree on a proposal? If everyone agrees on a proposal, to get written written into the lead reg regulation, and that's how that watershed conservation district will be funded. If not everyone agrees, it will be based on land assessment each year. That's the way the legislation is worded. The legislation's worded that we have the two ways, right, right to calculate the levies, mm -hmm. and we have them as an option A or B, mm -hmm. and we want to know from the province's perspective which one we're writing in. Mm -hmm. So, so we know we've cleared up that you want to be part of the, the district, which is great, and now I think we just have the second right. part to figure it out. And, and the default position, if, if there's not an agreement, it doesn't say a default position. Okay. It mm -hmm. says if if you have a proposal, which is a sharing portion, that will be written into that. If if there is no agreement, I think it doesn't say default. If there's no agreement, or if, if there's no proposal, then it'll be based on the proportionate share of land assessment of each municipality. And we have we have and we do have an agreement. But we don't. We do by nineteen to one. It, but but unfortunately, the agreement requires four parties to agree. If you don't have our agreement, it'll be based on my own sense. It doesn't say it doesn't say that here. I won't argue. Let's let's just not worry about it and let's make it twenty out of twenty. It's a pretty easy decision, especially when you're not concerned about the thirty thousand thirteen thousand. I'm not worried about it. It's just the process. Percentage or assessment. All right. 20 out of 20. Okay, anyway, you have until the end of April now, according to Charlotte. I, I feel like Charlotte maybe wanted to make comment on that. Is, <laughs> is what Councillor Gray saying true or, or, or are we misunderstood? So like I, I said earlier, because we've had conversations yeah. about this in the past, originally we were under the impression that it was land assessment. So your other questions relate to why is land assessment there? Mm -hmm. Land assessment has been what's been used in the past. It's what we continue to use. But apportionment is sort of an, another option available. We originally thought that if not everyone agrees, we go back to less assessment. Our lawyer has softened on that and said, well, if they want to do apportionment, if that's what the majority wants, then we can go that way. 
and whoever disagrees is up. Well, that's a bit of a blurry line that we're trying to figure out. <laughs> the, the legislation can't be blurry. What, what did the House pass? It, 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 <coughs> it says that it's A or B. It just says you pick A or you pick B, basically is the way that the legislation is written. It doesn't say this one's priority or that one in the legislation for the act. And you see, in some watershed districts, the board makes those decisions. We don't do that. We bring everybody in, all the sub-district members who are appointed by the municipalities, and we do and include everybody in the democratic process. We don't take use six members of the board to dictate to the rest. It's not crowded. It's not equal. But the but some watershed districts do use the board and make those decisions for the rest of the people. Okay. Um, um, that uh, concludes any. Am I misreading? Questions from anybody else? Twenty-five two. Sorry. Uh, am I misreading section twenty-five two? It says that the amount to be raised, uh, total amount raised is the prescribed percentage of the percentage prescribed for the included municipality under subsection eight three, which is a requirement or the amount determined according to the following formula in any other case, which is the value of the gradable land over the value of the total of gradable land. Yeah, I mean, so it says- You remove us, then you decide to remove us. That's not It says the prescribed percentage, if the percentage has been prescribed for the including municipality, or the amount determined in accordance with right. the a land assessment. So it says A or B. Yeah. yeah, but if, if if A isn't applicable, that is, if there isn't an agreement, then it's B. Oh, I see what you're that's saying. What that's what you're. Says. That's how you're interpreting. Well, that, that's what the legislation says. It's well, I see what you're saying. I understand. <clears throat> Are you able to give us clarity on that? You can talk to your lawyer again and give us. I'm meeting with him on Thursday, so I will make sure to ask this question okay. for you. <laughs> and then I will call Derek. Okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good discussion. Councillor White, we're going to continue on. You're going to be with us. Councillor White. I'm just here. All right, so we'll move on to uh, communications, Northern Urban Reserve Municipalities and Economic Development Forum. I have the information there. Um, I do understand that there may be some interest uh, for any members of council to perhaps attend that. Councilor Gray, I think we had. I said I would. If, 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 yeah, 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 I have to check my schedule. I'm free for court. I, 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 if you, I, I, I'd like to know more about it, but I, I you got a preliminary thing, and I think it's something that would be useful for us to amend. Um, it's, I, I, well, you would need a resolution on that, Mr. Brown? Yeah. yeah. If there is, if the council is wishing to do it. I don't think there's any fee to attend, it's an invitation, but the, uh, that's hotels or whatever, but does anybody else have any interest in attending it? So he says agenda to fall. I, it, it would be really helpful to know what the agenda is. Right. We, we can always uh, do a, a resolution and, and have Mr. Gray or anybody else. And if we have choose a, not to, then we choose not to attend. We have a, a meeting next Tuesday, which is April 2nd. Oh, right. Oh, next we get a, uh, so then let's can we see can. what can come on. Then. They want to start RTP by March 31st, though. They do. So we can do, do a resolution tonight. And if the, if, it doesn't, oh, yeah. if it doesn't appeal to us, then... Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe reserve maybe two spots or something on that. Yeah. If um, we're on that committee together, it's kind of some gray, so something yeah. that maybe yeah. get your sign on one of us. Yeah, somebody. Uh, I, I think, well, it depends what the agenda says. I, don't, right. I really don't know at this point. <coughs> If it's people lecturing, I'm, I'm less inclined to. Okay. So we, we, we can do that in uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, it's so moving on to um, uh, resolve that the superintendent of works report be received. Moved by Councillor 
Friesen, second by Councillor Lintoni. So any questions to Mr. Poole on the uh, report there? Councillor Morio and then Councillor Delorier. Um, Mr. Poole, in the engineering direct, uh, section, it says reviewing Westman communication routes for approval. What's that referring to? Is that uh, they have some, just some installations they're doing. Uh, there's several actually. Near Hill Avenue, the other one I believe is for Street North. <coughs> Councilor Delorier. Uh, I've seen that with uh, what it says. Have they given us a, a contract yet? I, I, I don't know if they've signed it yet. I, they, we may have, and we may have had it for days. I just haven't talked to Darren. Regarding. Okay. Darren is completely heading that up. Okay. So we are we are planning regarding that uh, uh, media. I guess we'll pass it through the the media committee, but we do have a plan uh, for the town's advertising strategy, and we've we've met regarding OSSs. So we just wanted to make sure we're not saying two different things. Okay. Um, specifically on on a exit clause, though, I guess is why I was asking if yeah. we're going to get our lawyer to look at that or. or it, it's 90 days similar to okay. the, but we can. Okay. You know, no, that's fine if we've looked at it. We haven't signed it yet. We, were waiting for we haven't signed it yet. <clears throat> uh, um, I'm Sister Bouquet. I mentioned to him about uh, Mr. Poole, but a huge pot will go in first, and within a matter of half an hour, it was. So thank you very much. Just Mr. Poole, in regards to OSS, have you heard any um, any um, grumblings from local businesses who didn't have dumpsters for recycling, who will be getting dumpsters? Has there been any issues as far as space requirements for those who didn't have any sort of bins who will be forced to go to bins? Uh, there will be. We've done the initial tour with OSS for commercial, and they've marked uh, certain businesses, and they want to they want to be there when we work it out with those businesses, so that's in the works. Okay. So yes, there has been a few space, space issues uh, regarding their truck and their dumpsters, but uh, we are going to figure it out. Thank you very much. Any further? All in favor? Carriage. Resolved that the handyman report for February 2019 be received mm -hmm. by Councillor <coughs> And Tony, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Sorry about that. Okay, so the um, <coughs> Council of CAO reports. I will begin with Councillor Friesen. Um, um, I guess Communities in Blue was the only thing that I had this last week. We had a meeting. Just to go ahead with the registration. Um, we're putting pots on Main Street. We've already bought them. Um, Murray out at Terry's Greenhouse is planting them. They're all ready to go. And I'm just requesting to talk to Mr. Poole already. And we'll work out where they're going to hang them if the guys, our local shop guys, can hang them for us because there's no way I'm planning to allow to do it. And I think. Um, I guess I had a question about Flint Flon. Is now the time to do it? Is anybody going? Are we going? Uh, we had talked to the, about going to the Flint Flon trade show. I can answer to that. So <coughs> the, it was passed to the RISE board, and instead of the town of Swanner putting money to the RISE board, the town would just essentially pay you and Councilor Morio to go up there. We're going up. Um, I think if you, want. If, if you wanted to, that was kind of the consensus, yeah. but rather than giving a grant to the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Commerce is paying it right back 
to to you is that it would just be the town on behalf of the town. So I think that if that's the case, we'd probably have to pass a resolution, right, to, to, to send them. Um, but Stacy would assist with, or she has booked, Stacy at the chamber has booked, uh, booked us in, uh, just waiting for confirmation. Uh, and the only thing that we would then split out would be the fee for it, and that would be charged to um, the municipalities. But as far as getting a, a grant, it would just be done that the town would be sending the two representatives, the two of you. So, so the next Stacy uh, wouldn't Stacy wouldn't go. She would be going too, I'm sure. And I, I was under the impression that she would be going as well. And and the other municipalities were invited if they want to. We said, why wouldn't we use this one? Thomas Wonder would ban it, pay for the gas, and away we go. The other municipalities would be invited if they send people, they can have them. Uh, I know one of the councillors from Swan Valley West said, well, we pay people differently. So if our councillors went, then you know, they get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, whatever. That's good for you. However, you have to do it. If, if you want to send somebody, there'll be room in the van. Just let us know. I, have, I have talked to Bill. Uh, the weekend after. Did you want to go? Did you want to go? Dates? 26. Oh, weekend before Thompson. Yes, it's the weekend before Thompson. I don't have the exact date written in my notes. Friday is the 26th. I thought it was the 25th, 26th, 27th. Okay. So is that before that's Thompson? Trade show? I don't know when Thompson is. So let's yep. uh, figure out what that date is. We can give that to Mr. Poole. He can do a uh, prepare a resolution for next week's meeting, and then who chooses can be added to that resolution. Mrs. Potton has offered to run me through a bunch of stuff that they do when they go to Thompson and give us the backboard and perfect. That'd be wonderful. It's going to be the dates. I'm interested. Okay. You are interested? Interested. Okay. And was that everything then? Yes, thank okay. you. Council Um last week I was in Winnipeg with some fellow councillors oh. and the CEO at the municipal official seminar on the nineteenth and twentieth. Um while there, we took in a few of the training sessions that were there and information sessions. Um, a couple of them that I took in was in the, uh, the new bylaw enforcement uh, act that's out there. It was trying to give clarity or some more information to the municipalities on um, what their options are um, with bylaw enforcement uh, and how to um, deal with it if they want to stay with the current system, go with the provincial offense summary system, or through the a local adjudicator or uh, adjudicator or screen officer locally from the town office. Um, there's more information that will be coming out of that. I have a sh uh, PowerPoint of that presentation I'll share with the rest of the council, so that's there. Also attended another one of the uh, seminars that was on governance um, for councils along with the CEO. Um, and one of the, it matched with the theme that was obviously present throughout the entire um, session on governance is that councils are strictly a governance body and not an operational body and CEOs and administration are a operations body and not a governance body and councils flow through uh, the CEO to the, the public and so it's been it was at least three sessions that reiterated that so I imagine that there's is some issues out there that the province is trying to reiterate that uh, council shouldn't be mucking into the day-to-day -day operations of municipalities. So, um, also attended a presentation on one of the plenaries from uh, Shared Health Manitoba that was uh, started off by the Minister of Finance along and then wrapped up with the CEO, uh, Dr. Brock Wright uh, from Shared Health Manitoba in regarding to where they're at. Uh, they showed some information as to some of the stats progress that they've made to date. Um, there was a few uh, highlights in their speech that uh, I think made reference to our economic case with the CT scanner. Um, in there, um, Mayor Jacobson uh, took the opportunity right after their speech to corner the minister, so kudos to him on that one. Um, and then one of the final um, plenaries we had was on the infrastructure. Um, for Manitoba infrastructure, reiterating some of the details to the uh, old roads and bridges grant that we uh, used to get that now we don't have to apply for. It's going to be an automatic grant that comes right out to the um, municipalities, which is going to be 100% unrestricted. 
that's, that's uh, definitely a good improvement. And then on the 21st, I attended second uh, the Municipal Justice Advisory Committee, uh, where we had a special meeting to discuss uh, principles and policing costs and brainstormed and looked at all different facts and figures and all that stuff. And it was quite clear why um, policing costs formulas are where they are right now and why no one wanted to touch them in the last 50 years. Um, but obviously there is a great momentum and great voice that it needs to be um, re-looked at right now as the Police Services Act was supposed to be, it's getting, getting gonna get reviewed here shortly, and be opened up for review because it is past the five year time frame from 2012 when it was supposed to be reviewed. Um, but there's also clear funding differences that are stated within the Police Services Act and the Municipal Amalgamations Act that they need to sort out. Um, because those two acts are not jiving on funding for police services. So um, we made some recommendations that AMM is going to present to the minister and uh, go from there. That's all I, have. I just want to comment to you, Council Morial, that I was speaking with Des Volkov, who was also on that. Uh, Justice, Justice Advisory Committee, and he uh, had commented that said that you're doing an outstanding job and you're representing the municipality very well. So thank you for that, Councillor Antoni. We got a little bit of a list today, <laughs> and a couple other ones, but I'll make it quick. Um, I just want to welcome you back, uh, Mr. Mayor, on your from your vacation, and I just want to um, let out the council know that I was honored to chair. A couple of council meetings, and um, yeah, it was a, it was an honor to, to have that role. So I thank you for that, and welcome home, as well as Councillor White, welcome home from your vacation. And I hope you enjoyed the flight. <laughs> um, all right, I just wanted to um, put a shout out to Mr. Poole and his crew for the uh, the press releases that were released. When we had the issues with the arena, I thought that that was handled extremely well, um, and we were on top of that, and we were um, on the forefront of getting getting ahead of any rumors or comments that were made by the public. So I wanted to commend you on on that job, well done, and accolades as well. I think that sometimes we don't always give or show enough credit to some people who do an awful big job in our in our department, and, and Mr. Ganita and and. The CFO, I think he does a very good job on, and as you see um, with the check explanations, things like that, and I had the opportunity to sign all the checks <coughs> while the mayor was away, and, and he's got a big job, and he does a very good job, so I just wanted to extend um, accolades to him. Um, Flint Flon Trade Show, we've talked about that with uh, Councillor uh, Friesen and Mario. Um, as well as I was in attendance at the AMM meetings with CAO Mr. Poole, Councilor Mario, and, and Mayor Jacobson, and that was a, a very, very um, eye-opening meeting. It talked a lot about governance, and um, yeah, I was proud to be there, and, and I learned a lot. I have the opportunity to take in some training sessions in economic development. Um, then I just want to reiterate how important economic development um, and tourism is within all municipalities and how there's an emph emphasis being put on that um, which I will touch a little bit more as we continue as I continue my list um, I also had to um, uh, have discussions with a couple of rate payers um, 217 7th Avenue South um, in regards to some water issues as well as 28 Parkview Drive so I think that we had discussions with um, CAO um, and Deputy Works um, gentlemen, and I think that we came to conclusions on, on both of those. Um, in correspondence, Mr. Poole, I am missing, or I didn't see anything in regards to a dumpster issue that uh, was brought to the attention and a letter was given to council. Um, so I didn't see that. If we could maybe touch on that at some point, or if you want to talk about it now, or or if you want to wait till later, it's up to you, I guess. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just, the dumpster, the which one? It was uh, Lorna Bell, I think, Swan Lake Meadows. Um, it was having a dumpster banging into, right the, against the wall. into the wall that the town previously replaced siding on it, and it's happened again. I just think, and it, it followed in the guidelines of 
of, um, of policies, policies with dumpster and garbage collecting. And I think that we just need to make sure that we look at those policies and that they're all the same in, in terms of having a pad and having plates behind our dumpsters. And we need to go back to our policies sometime and, and bylaws and ensure that those are followed. So I'm hoping that you and they can work it out or we have that discussion at some point. Yeah, I guess just to bring council up to speed, uh, yeah. there's a dumpster with no pad. Usually on a pad, we have the angle irons so the guys have somewhere to push the dumpster into dumpster up against over the years we've we have not followed our our policies on forcing the, the concrete pad or the angle iron so of course the dumpster backs up against a fence a building whatever and uh, and there's damage to the building but uh, the reason is we you know they ask is the hard surface good enough and, and the answer goes to yes <clears throat> So it's just one of the uh, repercussions of, of not enforcing the policy. Uh, I would think probably in this case that if, if it's an ongoing issue as far as building or building damage or fence damage, that we would ask them to put a, a cement pad with the backstop that is required. Yeah. So I trust that you'll follow up with that. Yes. Yes, I just couldn't pull it from no problem. Past. I know how busy you are. That's not a problem. Um, and just in regards to policies, uh, talking a little bit about the handy van policies, that's something that will go to the committee. I just don't want that to, to slip by the way, and that's why I'm mentioning that one as well. And, and, and in terms of policies, not necessarily the one that we see, but more of a, of a handling of, of the patrons, I guess. So that'll go to committee and we'll discuss that. I did want to talk a little bit about RISE, and I think that Councillor Gray, when he gets his turn, will have way more to say on that, but um, just in regards to RISE, our um, um, uh, our officer has, economic, economic, thank you, our EDO has, has resigned her position. Um, we did have the discussion that will be, they, Mr. Councillor Gray will talk more about budget and numbers in regards to that. Um, she has resigned from the position. We have um, issued um, the recruitment of a new CDC, or, uh, um, an officer, an economic development, EDO economic development officer. So the plan is that we do rehire. However, budget numbers I think are going to be um, reflective on on other aid. They're going to be higher than what they currently are. Um, but having said that. Economic development, I think, is something that we need to strongly encourage and focus some attention to. So I just wanted that to be brought to council's attention. And like I said, Councillor Gray will follow up more with that. And I think that was the allotted time I had, so I'm, I'm good with that to pass the torch. No, no, no allotted time. Councillor Deloria. Uh, I had a library board meeting um, on uh, budget looking like it's not quite finalized yet but it's looking like uh, it will be two percent higher than what we should have paid last year if we would have paid what, what we were supposed to because for those we kind of got in a little bit of a fight last year with our partners there and we refused to pay uh, the increase they're demanding so we settled on I forget how we came up with the number we settled on, but anyways, so now the, the budget is not too, we'll be going at probably 2% higher than what we should have paid last year. Um, what else? Uh, I had a rec committee meeting earlier today uh, discussing issues with the arena and possible uh, Possible uh, changes to the pool pool scheduling, so there will be a public meeting on uh, on the twenty fourth of April, it's a Wednesday. I believe. Public meeting twenty fourth of April to discuss uh, possible changes to uh, hours of operation at the pool, things of that nature. Um, only other thing is. Uh, I, I mention this a lot, almost every council meeting, I'm getting really nervous now, we're looking April in the face, when are we going to have a budget meeting? 
I'm not going to say a date right now, but okay. it is getting worked on. Okay. Do you think you would have a projected date? I'm not asking to meet next week, but maybe by next week's meeting, you between now and then, you and Terry could yeah. get us. As long as I know there's a plan, I'll be a little bit more comfortable. I can get you a plan by yeah. next Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, Council. What is what, when on the twenty fourth is that meeting? Um, that's probably going to be at seven p.m. I would think. I'm going to look. here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm confident. Seven o'clock. Seven yeah. p.m. Here. <laughs> seven o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. So that's it for me here to decide. Okay. Well, so what? <clears throat> Uh, March 6th, we have the uh, medical service meeting here. I think we have about a dozen, 15 people. And I guess in short form is we've asked the doctors to go back and put some sort of plan together and that we could, uh, they could present to us and then collaboratively we could present it to the foundation or they themselves may present it to the health foundation. So that's in their hands, not back in their court. And obviously the issue was space, so uh, they need space. Then we had a planning meeting on uh, March 6th also. Uh, trying to conceptualize where we're going, how we're getting there, how do we measure where we're going, evaluate where the town should be, and I, I appreciate that concept. And on March the 7th, we had the Lions meeting with the Lions Club members uh, looking at recycling and, and the concerns they had and the good points of about it and uh, where we're going from there also, which is where we are. Uh, and it's a concept on the 16th, I had a telehealth meeting with uh, Prairie Mountain Health. And, and that principle, I like that they have uh, freed up some Prairie Mountain Health land for purchased by a private entity to put monies into a building. So that concept is uh, something that we may have to be talking about them with the land they own here someday too, but the precedent was set in my mind. I want to compliment uh, the mayor and uh, Patty Henkelman, our rec director, relative to the arrangement to have the uh, Stan Peters play Friday. It was, uh, wasn't, you got the hall to make it happen. There was a lot of negotiating, a lot of good faith negotiating. And I know the mayor uh, has some pals that made it happen. And Patty had to do a lot of calling too. And I'm sure there are others. I'm sure Derek was involved. So communities working together, plural, to help all our hockey team. So I appreciate that. And uh, I want to really compliment our team who were at the, uh, the municipal meetings of Winnipeg on the weekend and taking the time to track down the Minister of, of Health, Mr. Minister Friesen. And those casual meetings and over coffee or a donut, uh, they're worth a lot of money. Networking, meeting people who uh, hopefully will, we will be meeting with sooner than later relative to helping out our community in the healthcare world. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Greg. <clears throat> as usual, a number of things. The first is rise. Um, as Constable Antonio has reported, the economic, the economic development officer has resigned. The idea that we're likely to recruit another half-time economic development officer seems unlikely. And so uh, if you extrapolate that salary and the mercs that go with it um, to a full-time position and some other modest things, the net budget for next year will need to be something in the range of $149,876, not to be too precise. Unlike the Swan Lake Watershed District, the RISE Board spent a full meeting discussing formulas and why we would want certain formulas for different things in terms of the way we would divide the responsibility. We ended up deciding, based on um, the nature of economic development and the benefits that flow from it, that the most prudent approach was to have 50% of the value of each municipality based on their assessments and 50% based on population. Um, there was not an easy thing. We went back and forth. Some people wanted full assessment, some people wanted just population, obviously. So it was, it was, we came to that decision before we even started looking at the numbers, before we even knew that there was going to be a change in the budget. Um, and so, um, it has a significant effect. So the assessments, um, Minnetona says 25%, we have 38%, I think it is, no, 30%. Uh, Saw Valley West is 38% and RM is 6.4, or Mountain is 6.4% based on what they presented to us. Based on population, there's only a population of 94, 74 in the four municipalities. 
Um, we have 42.4% of the population. Um, Mountain had, or um, our swimming about the uh, west is 29.9%. Um, Mountain is 10.3% and Minnetonas is 17.4%. Um, the combined percentages then are 30, 21 point, and I'm just going to give the brown numbers, 21, 28, 34, and 36. So each municipality is going to be asked for the following sums. Um, uh, Minnetonas $33,191. Mountain twelve thousand three hundred seventy-seven dollars. RM West, uh, Swan Valley West fifty thousand three hundred fifty dollars. And the Town Swan fifty-three thousand nine hundred fifty-eight dollars. So, question is really whether you want to do economic development or not. Not so much whether or not. And we can bring what the plans are for that. But that's it's really that's what the question is. The um, so that, that, that's not the only ask, because there's also a Swan Valley Recreation Commission ask. We we'll get the same three councillors. Um, and so the patio is going to give us that, so I will give you the exact numbers because I promised that last time, and then I can't deliver it again. So next week we will deliver that. In terms of the Recreation Committee, uh, we have a lawsuit. We need to talk about the lawsuit. I can tell you we haven't talked to the lawyer. Every time I was available, he wasn't. Every time he was available, I wasn't. So. We set something up for Monday, Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, I don't know if we want to talk about it now or wait till next week. Um, in, uh, at the arena, we probably should talk in camera because there are a lot of issues and, and all that can happen is that we would fuel speculation and rumors if we talk about it in open form until we have concrete ideas and numbers. Um, other than that, I, I do want to commend um, our staff. We had a, a plan to implement it, but we were probably implemented immediately, and within three days we had the thing resolved. So they did a spectacular job, Patty and, and Derek, and, and all our staff. So I, I think that was spectacular. I actually have some issue about the quote Stan Peters thing, so I think we may want to discuss that maybe in our after meeting. I, I'm not even sure it's necessary for our camera meeting. Um, and we have developed some contingency long-term plans. So I don't know if you want to talk about those now or you want to wait until we have a more fulsome plan. Uh, but it should be, in, in, a, in my view, it should be in a, an in-camera session because it's not ready for public debate. Uh, I don't know if the other councillors, <coughs> they, they were involved with me. I, I, well, we're going to be in camera now. Yeah. Um, in terms of the pool repairs, um, I think our committee has recommended previously and, and that whatever repairs we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and do what, whatever the result of the lawsuit. We have to figure out what we're doing. Those are being included in the capital budget. There is going to be some strong um, discussion, I suspect, when we get to that. And on the 24th, I encourage all the councillors to come to the October, the April 24th. Um, if you come to the October 24th meeting, you'll be late. <laughs> uh, the uh, April 24th meeting. Um, to listen to the public, the whole purpose of it, of this particular meeting, the process we've we agreed as council, is to have the public available, their comments to be considered, and we're going to go back as a committee afterwards to talk about the pool, which include the rates and hours and all of that. But the reality is there are only so many things we can do, and we have to find ways of reducing some expenditures because we have other expenditures which are not going to be able to be reduced. Um, we did do some portion of well, planning, I hate to call it scrap planning because it's not really, we, we did talk about some things like finding a facilitator and so on. I don't know how far we're coming on that. We've had a management area, administration has had a lot of things on their plate, so I hesitate to ask what they've done, but that's really the next piece because gathering data is the most important piece of what the next piece is. If we don't do that well, the rest won't work very well. Um, I also, so we can put it on next time's agenda. So that the planning piece should go on, and I assume we're going to talk about that on April the 9th or whatever some session after that um, in terms of strategic planning. Um, in terms of the wrong one on here, uh, I also think that we need to talk about um, whether we do it in committee or amongst the whole council, which I would prefer the procedures, planning, and procurement bylaws. We should move on getting procedures bylaws moving forward. Procedures, procurement bylaws moving forward. And the other two we should revisit, I think, based on our discussion at the planning meeting. 
Um, we've dealt with that, we've dealt with that. Um, we were supposed to yesterday have a meeting. Um, some of the communities uh, with the indigenous some indigenous groups are in communities, I should say. Um, and um, there was trouble getting commitment from at least two of them. Um, that was the problem. Um, it is. Uh, on the other hand, I've, I've met with um, Septuac on a number of other things, and um, I think we should start bilateral conversations with Septuac, and if the others want to join us, that's great. But the reality is, we've now been five, we're now five months into our term, which is a sixth of the way through, uh, no, it's not, it's uh, an eighth of the way through, and, and I'm a little concerned that we haven't done anything on that or on intermunicipal relations, and I think we should simply start, set, set a date that is available for SAP, for SAP Day uh, Perhaps, I think the MRF would, be, would come into that, although I think there may be some contention there, but I think that would be, they would be, and if the other two um, communities want to be involved, they'll come. If they don't want to be involved, they don't have to come. I, I think we have to start somewhere, and, and we can't wait until there's consensus. So that's, that's my view on that. Um, did have a number of complaints about bylaw enforcement. About um, let's go through slum landlords, um, derelict vehicles, unfinished construction, and commercial vehicles, particularly transfers being parked on residential streets or on in two cases in the most recent past on Main Street. Um, there's also a reflection of snow removal, which a uh, suggestion. So I'm going to ask that the, the committee of traffic, I guess, this committee deals with this. But um, <coughs> most communities, you have in snow removal, they say they put up a sign and say this: at least streets are going to be cleared on this date. And get your damn car off the street. We can go around them, which is dangerous and difficult, and, and makes it harder for staff. Uh, I think we should really revisit that, and we should consider just having. The same as everybody else, and we don't have to start by by uh, sending stormtroopers and towing people's cars and whatever. But we certainly need to start by saying to people, you have to start respecting that and being off the street because we can't have all of the extra difficulty of going around the vehicles. I think that was well well thought through by the <coughs> citizens that raised it with me. A number, a number. Yeah, I have that part of my policy, my removal policy. Okay, be sharing with you. That's oh, that's okay, that's already been dealt with. Accept. Yeah. Um, another thing for the in-camera session, I think we need to talk about the CAO uh, pay limits because we ran into the same problem we had last time and I think we really need to have a policy discussion on that. Um, and one of the reasons I want to talk about some of the particular <coughs> plans is that really, Councilor Morgan you touched on it. Um, I wasn't at the AMN conference, but I, I think I have the gist of what he was saying about dividing governance and, and whatever, and, and I believe firmly in that. I don't think we should mix in with administration's role at all. And I think to the extent that's possible, we should divest ourselves of the individual concerns. And so to the extent it's possible, we shouldn't necessarily sit on external committees and we should trust citizens to do that to the extent that we can. And I'd like to get us out of that so that we have more time to do the big picture things that we're supposed to do. Because I think that's, we don't do a very good job of that or haven't so far. There's one more, <coughs> oh, there are two things we actually left. The first is one of, an example of that is the Swan Valley School Division and the School Division Review. And we have not talked as a council about our position or what strategies we're going to employ or anything of that nature. And that's a big issue because if the school division leaves, much of the discussion we're having is going to be moot. It's going to be a very difficult time for us. And I, for one, think that that's something we need to put on an agenda next time, perhaps, or maybe the time after here, so that we actually talk about what our strategy is for that. So if we talk about those big picture issues like that, and we're busy with that, we won't have time to do the other stuff we should hand around. Which brings me to the last item. And, and we'll be grateful for that all of them. There, this is, this is kind of, we, some months ago, directed that there be a letter to the AMM. And, and I know you phoned them. 
But, and, and I, I want to say, the AMM, this is what this is about, at the AMM, the AMM executive and staff treated disrespectfully the leader of the opposition and the leader of the third party. They um, allowed a run over of time by the barefoot session and then called coffee when the other two were talking. Um, I was incredibly proud of my council colleagues. Um, I, of course, sat through those sessions and would have anyway, but, but every single member of our council stayed and listened to all of those speeches. Um, that cannot be said for all of the municipalities. And, and candidly, um, governments change. You know, we all have political views, but the governments change. And just treating people disrespectfully is never a good idea. Even, even if that wasn't the case, that it's in our own interest, it's never a good idea. And I think we need to register to AMM that at least for our municipalities, that we don't believe that's the way people should be treated. That we believe that every person, every guest particularly, is entitled to be treated with courtesy and respect. We can disagree with them without being disrespectful and, or, and without being disagreeable. And, and I think that behavior requires us to put on record a letter that requires them to respond and say why they do it and commit to not doing it. Or to say pound sand, so whenever we don't care, we'll do whatever we want. Whatever they want to say. But, but we need to take a stand that, that, that what they did was wrong. And, it, 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 and I, you can take whatever, you can have on whatever critical offense, but what they did was wrong. And I would have said that if, if they'd had, if they'd let, if, if a different government was in place and they'd done the same thing, I would stay, take the same thing. You just don't, you don't invite people and then walk out and let them talk to an empty room. It was unbelievable. So I think, and I know you've phoned, but I I'm actually, telling you, in my uh, view... I actually spoke with uh, uh, Joe yes. Massey about it on the, uh, when I was there last week as well. Okay. So <laughs> I still think you need to send a letter. We have, we have a resolution on it. Unless we want to change the resolution, which I'll speak against, but, but unless we want to change it, I think you have to send a letter and say, we want a response as to why you would have done that. That is wrong, and we want your commitment that's not going to happen. Yet. I'm sure we'll get a response. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll get a response. And then... No. Then we'll get a response. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the okay. time. Okay. I actually just want to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned uh, that are very important, like you have mentioned, uh, the Indigenous relations and, and, and us trying to get the, the four of them together, and which was definitely not working. In fact, I spent a little bit of time today phoning them and, and just email, uh, voicemails and, and, and no responses. I agree with you that that will be one of the very first things that I'll work on tomorrow is I... Uh, uh, touching base with Chief uh, Janai, and because I, we already had some common ground already, so it, it's it would be easier for us, and then at least we got, you know, uh, a stepping stone and we can move forward. Um, the Swan Valley School Division, uh, I was going to actually touch on that in my report, and so, so the policy. The um, we're talking about the extra committees that Roger, when he was here, and he kind of talked about. Says we, we have too many committees, and, and we have to find you know others. So, anyways, I agree with that. And some external help it would be definitely uh, nice to have um, uh, some extra people that can help us out a little bit, especially on some of those external committees. So, I guess with my report, if I can go next. Um, Again, I was away on vacation, so thank you very much for everybody that everything went well. And, and I, everything, as far as I know, went well, except that I, I did hear some rumor that um, uh, there was kind of a coup or something like that was attempted by Councillor Delorier, and there was going to be some uh, <laughs> office selling or something like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, joke. Yeah. They sold the municipal office and started a uh, constitutional monarchy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you want to be king or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to be back. Um, so uh, basically for me, we we're off to the municipal uh, uh, official seminar in Winnipeg last week, as a uh, few of our colleagues have mentioned about so uh, our first meeting actually that we had was with four group and they about governance and stuff like that that you had mentioned but one of the interesting things that they're talking about trust and how we grow this trust and relationship with with each other and also with our administration <coughs> management and everything else and they touched down a little bit about town of Dixon and I'm not going to go all into it but they talked about uh, Rita uh, Cromwell and if anybody actually done some research or maybe even read about it you know she was their treasurer and controller for like 20 years and 
and filtered like $53 million from this municipality, and, and it was just a horrible thing. But anyways, they recovered, um, um, I think, most of that money from, you know, whatever, pro, uh, from sales and proceeds, whatever else. But anyways, it's, it's quite a story. But uh, through that session, you know, we learned about the rule of the CEO and how to respect that, code of conduct, and meetings, and emails, and financial stewardship. And actually, it's interesting because when they actually even talked about financials, they, they were admitted and saying like a lot of people won't even understand financials, but they actually point out and said these are kind of the things that you should be looking at on financial statements. And they pointed those things out, so I thought that was pretty uh, interesting there. <clears throat> and of course, you know, decision making, ethics, and government avoiding conflicts of interest, and so on. This actually followed up by us meeting with the mayors and reeves and CEO meetings. Uh, we talked about the trading company and its benefits to our municipality, the roads and bridges uh, grant that uh, Council Morio talked about, and, and how they're changing that where we no longer have the red tape, no more application for that. It, it can be banked and it can be deferred for another year or actually can be even leveraged for federal and provincial grants and, and stuff like that. So for us, the town of Swan River falls in that population of 2,000 to 5,000 which will be receiving uh, 61500 um, this uh, for this year. And I, I don't know how many years it goes on for, but uh, I imagine for the next few years. We talked about economic development, which is a big part of it. And I know that Councillor, when Tony went to uh, a session and all that on that, but um, we definitely heard from Councillor Gray talk about what, if we're going to invest in economic development, if we want an economic development, then we have to seriously look at this. And uh, one of the things that the province is doing is they're boosting a huge amount of money into rural Manitoba, and they're going to be setting up seven regional offices for economic development uh, for rural Manitoba, and they're focusing on economic development uh, for rural Manitoba. So this is a, a big thing, and actually when that whole announcement was coming in that meeting, we were all texting and, and, and telling everybody you know, that we had to start lobbying to have one of those offices in the Swan Valley. So we we're working on that and, and we'll be working with our municipal partners as well to get that, uh, uh, hopefully we can land one of those. Bill 2, Municipal Act, uh, Code of Conduct is, is going to, Code of Conduct is being uh, about to be released and uh, to the public, uh, I think in probably the next uh, three months or four months. And it's interesting because the Act is going to include, some of the stuff it's going to include is uh, elected councillors will have to take um, training six months or, or courses for six months or whatever within being elected and uh, and if they do not uh, take this training they can be suspended so it's interesting that uh, some of the, the the stuff that they talked about uh, for governance and code of conduct and stuff like that at the at the, uh, at the, at the seminars that they talked about Public school finance, and I think this, this is where we talk about the Swan Valley School School Division and, and our position, and we all know that it's under review and how taxation is going to look like, and if it's going to remain, say, on the municipal tax bill, or if it's going to be some somehow else. And, and they're actually looking at all that, and all the municipalities will be asked to participate in this, and we'll have to make a submission to the commission as far as what our position is and and what we thought what we think about that. So. Um, we're definitely going to be part of that process. And uh, it was interesting, actually, when they were talking about it, and I think, I don't know who had brought it up, but they said, well, if you don't see um, school taxes on the municipal bill anymore, then you're just going to have municipal taxes. So somebody said, well, then you're going to have this leverage that's going to be created for municipalities now to uh, tax, you know, perhaps more because there's going to be this... You know this this gap left for you know taxes and I thought that was kind of odd but anyway at the end of the day it doesn't matter if taxes for school divisions and 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 paying for education still has to come from somewhere if it has to does come from the property owner it's going to have to come from somewhere from the province um we talked about uh sessions through uh conflict and stuff like that and it was interesting because it was not necessarily amongst council members but it was more towards conflict that arise to employees and management and rate payers and how leaders fail to respond quickly and effectively to, uh, to conflict that uh, often lead with their 
people in the workplace, that they end up leaving the workplace if it's not dealt with. And I think we kind of uh, know, you know things about that. Um, I attended sessions through, oh, and actually, you know what, this is actually, it's an interesting thing that you actually want to check out. It's www.achievecenter.com, and it's about leadership and workplace performance, and I don't know this to prove you actually took that in, but um, it was interesting. There also, uh, Greg Trambley talked about defamation and defense of qualified privilege, and we all kind of, I think, have an understanding of what that might be, and, and they talked about how many councils and individual councillors are, you know, have been sued for defamation and all that, and and how that's changing as far as what they say at this table and or what they say in the media or what they say in social media and all that, and uh, and, and 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 how to prevent yourself from getting in that position in the first place, and and uh, it's interesting, like some of the cases that he had mentioned about. Uh, people that were being sued, counselors and mayors and, and, and so on, but uh, um, it's interesting stuff. The uh, the health minister, as was mentioned earlier, about shared health and their expansion on, on, on what those hubs might look like in the, in the province. They are still working on that and they're actually planning on traveling with the AMM through the spring meetings because they do want uh, municipal input and, and they really feel that that's going to be an important part of it. Uh, like it was mentioned afterwards, I did speak with the health minister about the letter that I had sent to him and, and our possibility of landing the CT scanner here. He did say that um, he thought that the, the case study was were very well done and we made a good solid case on it. So now it's just sitting before Prairie Mountain Howe for, like he said, in, in the queue. So we have to be cautiously optimistic of of landing the CT scanner, but definitely um, it's, I, I think if we keep pushing it. And I did ask him when we're gonna have a chance to meet with him, so he said soon. And, uh, and it was interesting when they mentioned the transformation uh, capital fund, because this is the fund that they can use dollars to upgrade um, facilities to say hold or house a CT scanner. And all of us were trying to figure out what this name of this fund was and all of us that were sitting there started writing it down and the whole panel was looking at us, which were in the front row as usual, and they're kind of looking and smiling at us because they knew what, what we're up to. So anyway, that's uh, it for me. That's long enough. Councillor Deloria. Two, two questions. Uh... So, uh, some number of meetings ago, we had a couple of delegations making requests to us. Have we sent letters back to them? We've responded. To okay, them. good. Um, the only other thing, what uh, what is Council's wish as to my marching orders with the CD after our, our discussions tonight? Are, am I talking to Walter to get the whole crew back, or...? <laughs> I don't, I don't know if they were going to get any different outcome. I, I was going to say the same thing. I, I don't think that you're, we're, you, I guess, would get a, a different outcome or enough to change change the voting that, that did happen. So I've got... I agree with their lawyer's first assessment. The act is pretty clear. If there's agreement, then there's a, form, there's a formula. If there's no agreement, then it, in any other case, it goes to the opposite, to the formula. Our view is that. I, 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 be, I have to be honest, my view is that we should say that we um, believe that the 2019 assessment should be used, that for the 2019 year, however, we're prepared to pay the extra $6,000 voluntarily. Because if we agree to the formula, we're stuck to them for five years. If we say we want the other and we'll pay them that, but we'll pay the extra voluntarily for this year, we'll be in the middle of doing negotiations and we can say, look, we'll, well let's talk about what the formula is, not based on what you want the result to be. That That's the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Figure out the formula first, then we'll work out the numbers. It's it's funny that, that you mentioned that because I may have taken some liberties. We, we negotiated this for probably an hour. We talked about this at least. And I may have taken some liberties and, and threw that out there already because in my mind it wasn't about the money, it was about what, where did this come from? Right. So so I had already thrown that out there at them and they, they kind of were taken aback that I would even do that, but I was fairly confident that you know, it wasn't about, about the money. But so I, I agree, I, I guess maybe we should wait for some, 
uh, Charlotte's going to provide some clarity. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion. I, 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 I will tell you this. If, if their view, if the watershed district's view is that if we don't agree, we're out. If they want to throw us out, that's their choice. Right. I don't, I, I'm not much for being pushed. So then we'll wait to hear and, 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 and we'll be meeting again next week anyway. Okay. So All right. So okay. maybe we can also, in the Rail. meantime, we can work to flesh out that proposal, put it down on paper as like flesh out the presentation so that we can have it on paper depending on what her results back. But then Councilor Dory can indicate yeah. that we want a meeting. We have the question. I should warn you, I think that Richard and Yet is gobbledygook good because I think the lawyers must be getting a lot of pressure from a lot of municipalities to say what's going to happen because this we are not by far the worst people off. There are places where they've got 15 municipalities, all of them have interest in keeping their costs down. It's going to be a mess. And so I suspect that the lawyer has backed down from his position, but he's wrong if he in doing that. The reality is the legislation is very clear. If there's agreement, an agreement means the only way you come to agreement is everybody signs. You can't have an agreement where one party doesn't agree, it's not an agreement then. So you either have an agreement or in any other case, it's that formula. This reminds me of a saying about a road to somewhere with good exactly. intentions. Exactly. <laughs> so. Okay, that was it? Yeah, you, you were good. Okay, oh, so Councilor Friesen, did you have another question? Um, yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, we have Mr. Hugh Skinner coming up to do a pruning workshop, and I'm just wondering if uh, do we, we don't have anybody that does trees as such on our staff, do we? They're not licensed arborists. No, but but they, they would even Do you take think the, they would be interested in well, taking is, part is there, or coming? Is or? there a cost? No cost. Yeah, let me know. Well, it costs communities to bloom, but we're going to handle that. We prune at the stump. Prune at the stump. That's <laughs> like doing the animals. You shoot them. Okay, so that's it? Uh, no. Is there a PMH meeting at 10.30 at the hospital this week? What day? I don't know. There's a meeting every day. What day is this? There was one. I have PMH 10.30 at the hospital the 28th of March. No? No, I guess not. I'm not aware of that. There was a state goal resist past. There was a February 28th meeting. Yeah, there was a February 28th. <laughs> You're a month late. And I also have April the 9th as a pool meeting. That no, has been that's moved to the 24th. So I can erase that too then. Well, you move yes. it to the 24th. Yeah, I'm, I've got it on both days. That's why I'm asking. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Sorry. Okay, there is a you. PMH meeting on the 17th of April, but I don't think that's a public meeting. Too. Okay. In short order. Okay. Mr. Pool. Uh, just to update council, the new clerk starts tomorrow morning. It's pretty excited to have another set of hands in the office. Uh, I've been working with Patty pretty hard on the, the arena's report, which uh, we attended the rec committee meeting today and got some good discussion on where we're going to go next. But Patty's been working hard on, on the options. Uh, meeting with Darren with Public Works and the projects he's dealing with, OSS, the water treatment plant coordinator, uh, all of our excavations that you've seen in his report. Uh, and then with the fire chief, mostly on, on the derelict vehicles that were brought up and, and, uh, and a lot of the properties that are that were pretty disheveled around town, making sure that he, you know, we do something about it, but also making sure we follow proper process. Uh, and yeah, I attended the MOS with several councillors and I had a great time. I uh, learned a lot about the role of the CAO and really know what I'm getting myself into here. But uh, I know it was good to hear the, the ministers. And as usual, I, I really enjoyed the trade show. Uh, seeing those guys, they, they recognize me, and most of them do. But the most valuable part, I would say by far, is the networking. Uh, we, I got a chance to meet a young mayor from Morden, Mr. Brandon Burley. But just to, to shoot issues off with him, like Morden's quite considerably larger than the Swan River, but 
in the core, the same issues we have. They have, of course, they have some different, you know, different issues due to their location. But, but just talking to uh, to him about the same issues that we're, that we're having, that everybody's having in Manitoba, is is always valuable. You take away a lot from from those relationships, and you gain contacts. <clears throat> so I really enjoyed that. That's it. Okay, sort of like you hired a new clerk. Yes, they start tomorrow morning. And who that is? Who's that? Carlo Weir. Okay. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, resolve that the change order 001 of the well control building project be approved, consisting of A tap programming the well control building and integrating the controls with the existing water treatment plant and installation of a pitless at well five and piping from well five to well control to the well control building. Uh, moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. You have some information there? Yeah, I added on the uh, September review just to show council that uh, that this was an expected change order. So the the contract that was awarded is for nine hundred thirty one thousand two hundred fifty. Uh, we had budgeted fifty thousand. This is out of contract costs, so fifty thousand dollars for our hydro service uh, well one work, which is exactly all of this. The uh, the uh, recasing the installation of the pitless adapter uh, and the programming for the well site to the water treatment plant. So uh, this is all budgeted outside of, of that contract. So the, the reason being is there was a pretty good push to get this project started last fall. Obviously that didn't happen, but during design in the early summer, we did not have the information from our well one inspection from our hydrogeologist. So the directive to our consultant was to continue on with design. When we did get that inspection information, uh, it was literally during our award. So the, we couldn't change the design, so we knew it would come as a change directive. So uh, this is the reason why this is coming, but uh, it is in a total budget. And I guess council should know that in a normal year, like you guys should see a capital review for the previous years uh, that just hasn't been done. But just to see the whole capital list of 18, what was budgeted, what was actual, I can get Darren working on that, but we are trying Council, to keep up. Council Boy. Our two questions. Um, the 18000 for the reprogram, is that like a, a reimbursement for the, and then for the programming, or is that an additional cost to us? That's an additional cost to us. It was left out of the scope in the design. Uh, we wanted to make sure that the the material and the, the whole system was the same as what was put in, in the lift stations. We, we know what was in the lift stations, but uh, it was just simply left out of the scope, and we, we need to do it. We have to have that programming in uh, to the water treatment plant between the wells. It just was not a part of the contract. Uh, second question, I was reading an announcement from the province of Manitoba with the increased funding to the Water Stewardship Board <coughs> and it mentions specifically uh, funding to Swan River for uh, wells. Um, did we get a number from them exactly what that is? We received that $500,000. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? So, oh, sorry, go ahead, Councilor. Is the 55000 budgeted? Because when I looked through it, there was 30000 budgeted. Uh, and there was fifty thousand for hydro and something else. Yeah, there's there's fifty thousand dollars for the hydro service. The well well one work was thirty thousand dollars. Well three service six thousand dollars. Included in that was our programming, but uh, like I didn't break that out. We knew the programming would be an extra cost. Eight. So this is a twenty thousand dollar cost over. Uh, this should be well. No, we had an eighty six thousand dollars was the budgeted amount, this is going to cost us 72. So the, the, the well, uh, the well, uh, well one pitless, the casing and well three service is $36,000. 
is 36 wooden and change. The programming is $18,000 and the hydro service is not 50, it's going to cost us $16,000. Okay, that's that's, not that's the big change. Yeah, it's not okay. Good. Okay, so we're, we're actually not over budget. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, all in favor? Oh, it's carried. <clears throat> Resolve that the following building permits, uh, permit applications be received. Urban Sauger, number seven, Riverview Drive, Stucco, Rickworth Eaves, $25,000, 5800553, Manitoba Limited, 115th Avenue South. Addition, payday loans, uh, value work is to be determined. Cook and Cook Insurance, 922 Main Street, replace an LED roof sign, $10,000. Swan Valley Co-op 811 Main Street East, interior renovations, $1.3 million. Bullock and Barker, 1303 Third Street South, new home construction, $150,000. Manitoba Housing, 307th Avenue South, new air system and arrange hood, $226,405. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor Morio. Um. The second one, the Manitoba Limited one, how do we determine the value of a building permit and the cost or the value of work is to be determined? On uh -huh. the 4th Avenue South? Uh, yeah. Yes. Aren't you supposed to have some type of value of the scope of work that you're going to be doing to get over to get your building permit? And the building permit needs to be paid for before it gets validated? Uh, no, our, our permits are based on a fee and square footage. But, uh, the OFC, the OFC does it on value of work, yeah, but uh, yeah, so our fee, our schedule fee is a is a fee in square footage. So then, why don't we know what the value is if they know what their like square footage that they're going to build? Yeah, I guess I know that that has been brought up with Ron and uh, this exact one and why there isn't a value on there, and it is it's sitting on Terry's desk actually, but I. I didn't get a chance to talk to Ron about it uh, this week. <clears throat> so we are looking for that. The permit uh, is on Terry's desk waiting for that value to be. So it's not an issue permit then? Uh, as of right now, I do not believe it's, it, you know, I wouldn't make this list if it wasn't signed. So it has to be signed to make this list. But I can't tell you what the value is. It may have been filled in. As the process it can be signed, but it's sitting at the front desk to wait for payment before it can be issued. If it made this list, it it's definitely signed, and it wouldn't be signed unless it was paid for. So either Terry got Ron to sign it today or fill in that value, but I would have to get back to you. I just don't want to end up in a similar situation that we've had yeah. a couple years ago where permit was not paid and work was getting done. Yeah. No, I can definitely look into that. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the town of sent two representatives to the Northern Urban Reserve Forum held in Thompson, Manitoba from April the 9th to the 10th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Gray, moved seconded by Councillor Lentoni. All in favor? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Unfinished business, 9.1. Whereas under subsection 252 clause E of the Municipal Act, a municipality may, for municipal purposes, use municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property. And whereas under subsection 252, 1 clause A, a municipality exercising powers in the nature of those referred to in clauses 252, B, C, and E, may set terms and conditions in respect of users, including setting the rates of amounts of deposit fees and other charges, and charging and collecting them. And whereas under subsection 252, 2, a charge referred to a clause in a clause, 1A may be collected by a municipality in the same manner as a tax may be collected or enforced under this Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed below, therefore be it resolved that each of the following unpaid amounts be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that manner. Uh, 
repeat all of those? Like any line? You don't need to No, it's fine. We can read. Okay. I agree. How do I read this thing? I can't read the bottom of here. Oh, there we are. Be it further resolved that notices be sent to the property owners detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for the unpaid property taxes effective April the 1st, 2019. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Be it resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General account checks number 24051 to 24148 for a total of $232,907.89. Uh, no check number 24076 was voided due to having a credit on the account. And checks number 24088, number uh, 2, number 24093, voided due to technical issues. Two payroll checks, account checks number 4412 to 4415 for a total of 3513 68 cents. Payroll account checks number 4416 to 4424 for a total of $100,620.66. Payroll account checks number 4425 to number 4430 in a total of 99618 and 80 cents. Moved by Councillor. And Tony, a second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? No discussion, no questions, Councillor Gray. Um, there's a couple in here. The first is check number 24125, Diamond Software. $6,000 for five days of online training. That is for our, our uh, utility software training. Six thousand okay. dollars. Uh, yeah, to you know, I believe it was two full days of training. Well, it was five days, but that's twelve hundred dollars a day for our online course. Well, no, it went well. It was more What's than an online course. It definitely went through the. You know, they we had a trainer on the phone all day going through scenarios, all of that. It's, it's definitely needed. We, we can't expect our employees to, to not have training on our software. We do not have someone skilled enough to train in, in Diamond. <clears throat> so, so the question is why would we have Diamond software if we can't, like $6,000 for training on software is unbelievably expensive. Yeah, Terry doesn't like it too. We have looked at other, other software programs we like we're we're in a dilemma right now actually it's funny we're talking about this because we're we need to upgrade our diamond programs and that can be as much as <coughs> 20 to 250 thousand dollars so we're looking at alternatives to what other municipalities are using but it's the the, the costs are so gigantic we we can't do anything fast so we yeah, we, we, we definitely, when we have new employees, there's no question we are going to train them. <clears throat> and they set the price. Non-negotiable. That's the whole point of the new procurement, and we need to review that, because candidly, if those kind of costs are continual, that's ridiculous. We agree we don't like it, but we're looking at what other training, like what other uh, software companies can provide and uh, what their training costs are. It's, uh, well, what, what am I mean? Is this the pure accounting program? Yeah, it's, it's uh, I do not know Diamond. I, I wouldn't even attempt to uh, try to explain it. But it's everything from handling our, all of our accounting, our inventory, our, our cash in, cash out, payroll. Oof, I couldn't even. That's where I would definitely 
have to get back to you on exactly what what I think is we should look at um, but what the alternatives are for for accounting software because a two hundred fifty thousand dollar accounting software package and six thousand dollars for every employee to train them. I well, that seems excessive to me. Yeah, but, and then I guess that's what you know if so that, if we have high employee turnovers and need like we won't. Well, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm just worried about the cost. Like yeah. whether we have high or low employee turnovers. I know that yeah. it need more cost per year, yeah. but for me. I think we should go into the procurement process to see whether there's something else out there. I'm, and we should be engaging our accountants to assist in saying, what else could we do that would fit these needs? And we have, we have, Mr. Kenyon is exceptional in terms of his understanding of accounting. If, and if he can't define what we need, then I think there's probably no way in the planet that's going to be able to define what a municipal, a municipal government needs. And I'm hard pressed to imagine we have to spend a quarter million dollars in the accounting software package uh, and six thousand dollars a third place. Anyway, I have, I, it's spent, it's it, done. I'm not, I'm not worrying about it. I'm just yeah. expressing concern, and I'd like to see that back. Sure. The second thing, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I thought, and I could be entirely wrong, that we had decided that with respect to the, and we talked about this before, so this is going to surprise you. With respect to the Lions, that the deal was we were going to advance them as much money as they needed to remain operational, and that for 2018 and 2019 we were then going to see what they could gain from the capital from the sale of their capitalized assets. We were going to deduct from their net losses minus things like a, like accounting fees and and uh, things that were and, and management, which was their profit. We we're going to deduct that out, and we would pay our share of the leftover balance. I thought that's what we agreed in our resolution. Was I wrong? That's what the resolution actually says. I know that's what I voted on, so that's why I'm asking. Special meeting. Resolved that the town of Swinner cover the 2018 deficit incurred by the Valley Lines recy recycling up to the amount of 56000 I'll have to look at the tape because that's not what we. There is no tape, there's a special meeting. That wasn't my reflection of the resolution. I don't know if we did. We I, you this were, I, I remember you were the one that changed the word. Uh, you added the word up to? Right, because yeah. we talked about a loan, advancing the money up to 56000 We could loan them the whole amount, up to that amount. And I, I'm going to say, Mr. Poole actually already corrected me, so I'm the wrong word, but settled, told me, well, we can still achieve that because there'll be a deficit this coming year, and we can deduct those amounts that we were going to deduct anyway. But we need to tell the line, we're going to deduct those amounts. Like that's. That's I, not coming up. I have talked to, to Alec and told him that we had issue with the, the administration charges and the, the audit. He didn't seem too surprised on the audit, but uh, yeah, he would want to discuss the, the admin charges because he I, he brought up that same argument that, that I did at the at the special meeting saying that you know they do way more work than that and that goes to the Lions, but that would be I guess that's a discussion for. for well, I have no problem with that, except that now they're asking us to cut a loss on an agreement where that wasn't the deal. And I have no problem covering the loss because they did good work. But, but why would we also cover their profit? Anyway, the third thing, and it's a recurring complaint, I'm going to use a different word, um, is I still want to see a financial statement. Right. And regarding that, uh, our CFO did get back to me, and the reason why he, he can't is is our Diamond software. It will not let him uh, show a a finished state monthly statement until 2018 is done, and he has not he's he has not yet finished off 2018. So there's a reason why he can't. that it's a useless program. So we we can't even pay like we that's how Diamond's set up. We have to finish off 2018 in the payroll section before we can even start paying at 19. It's a real, uh, 
and useless program. Uh, from what I've heard from it over the number of years, it's very convoluted. It's you just get a different program. Yeah. And get QuickBooks <clears throat> for a thousand dollars and move on. Uh, I love QuickBooks. Crap. Crap. Uh, right. <coughs> Any other questions? Can't close. Uh, Councilman Tony. Councilman Gray, were you finished? I am. I'm just okay. mumbling. Okay, Councilman Tony. Mr. Bullcheck, number 24127 to all net for our annual website support, um, hosting and updates. Is there any way to get a breakdown of what that offers us for that price? I would like to see what we're paying for and compared to different options that Allnet does have that we can use. So is there any way to to see what, what's included in our package? Yes. Perfect. So the website package specifically or would you like the whole the whole bundle? I would like to see what we're what do we get for fifty four. What we get for it versus other packages and well, other stuff that they offer for Allnet. That would just be the website. The the Allnet meeting package is another it's way more than fifty six hundred dollars. Totally, I'm sure. I thought that this is. I canceled the 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 service driver alone was four thousand dollars. I can't. That was the first thing I canceled because we were not using it. And uh, like the apps are still out there, and we have to pay more money in order to get rid of rid of those. But I, we just let them be. But uh, we pay for the website and. The, this meeting stuff totally separately and it's I, expensive. I'd like to see a list of everything that we pay for to all that. Yeah. Thank you. I have to get him like pull out his original quote because it was all encompassing in that one package. Oh yeah. It's like the website, all net meetings, service tracker, that's all encompassing in one of the packages they had. Which was around the five thousand dollars. No really over that one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> All in favor? It's carried. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we have no bylaws, no motion. So I guess we'll resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We are going to be discussing the Centennial Arena and the CAO. Uh, potential pay limits. All in favor? Or I'm uh, sorry, moved by <laughs> Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morial. All in favor? It's carried. <laughs>